Hi everyone, Gerard Scarpese here, Craft Hairdresser and co-founder of the Hairbrain Community, bringing you another episode of Professionals Who Practice. This is our ongoing series with our good friends at Pivot Point, where we get great hairdressers to show you how they practice new ideas on mannequins from Pivot Point, and to also talk about how they use them for education, all while teaching you a great new technique. Today's my pleasure to be working with Gino Chapman, who's uh, a close personal friend. He's also got so many things in his resume. He's been an educator for many, many years. Uh, he's got his own product company that he launched called Black Label, which we can talk a little bit about. He's a Naha winner a few years back, and I know he's entered again this year, and I think uh, he's got a good chance of winning again. And just an all-around great designer in terms of hair, fashion, everything, and, and a great, really cool guy. He's got a great technique planned for us today, uh, a mid-length, kind of disconnected, creative cut that he just dreamed up. I think this might be the first time he's actually using the technique. So you are practicing it. So Gio, what do you got planned for us today? All right. Well, right now what I'm using uh, is just elevation. Elevation to soften out the cut, move the cut. But as you can see right now, I'm using horizontals with the elevation. The reason I'm doing this right now is to really to control the corners at the end uh, of the head here. So I can distribute the corners really soft and easy, but also remove a ton of weight as I go. So this helps also when the head is slightly down. It's easier for me to get kind of on the side of uh, my guest if this was really a guest in a chair. So it's easy for me to really uh, elevate and heighten up the hair here. So Kelly, can we get a shot of some of the pre-sectioning? We can see you've gone in and kind of pre-sectioned all these panels. Maybe when you finish this one up, you can give us a little overview of the rest of the panels. Absolutely, would love to. I'm almost there. Now, is that is that a new sectioning pattern? Is it something you're just trying out today in your professionals who practice series, or is it something you've used before? Uh, no, this is something that I was just you challenged me by dreaming up a mid-length haircut here. And I think the, the challenge that I wanted to bring to everybody was doing something quite creative, um, but also doing it in a creative way that's sellable behind the chair. So let's get a little 360 here. I'm just gonna loosen that up. And it looks like you kind of pirouetted around a little asymmetric triangle. Cool, so how many sections is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sections, started in the nape, and now you're getting on there. All right, guys, I'm gonna look for some of your questions as Gino starts to, uh, to move on in the haircut. So shout out to everyone that's watching. Our buddy Sasha is watching. Um, Carol Turner is watching. We've got someone watching from Greece. I can't read the, the Greek alphabet, but great to have <laughs> you here. We've got a top fan watching from Hong Kong. Carol Turner is here from Las Vegas. Barbara Johnson says, hello, Gerard and Gino. Our good hello. buddy Rick Bennett is watching. Uh, Eileen is watching from Long Island. All right, guys, so if you have any questions as Gino works through his disconnections here, I'd love to share those. So it looks like you're moving on to your next panel. Yeah. Tell us what's happening now. So the Gino. next panel here, again, just using a very simple, classic convex layer. For those out there, convex just follows the head shape, softens out the head shape. Gerard did mention that I'm using disconnection. And again, disconnection in this fashion is I'm disconnecting enough. If you don't disconnect enough sometimes within your haircuts, it looks like you're missing your guide. So in this case, uh, I'm about maybe an inch-ish inch -ish over my original guide. If you can see the guide right at the bottom there. And I'm just really making sure that I follow now, at this particular section, just the head shape. Now, how do you choose and why do you choose to follow the head shape at this point? It must have something to do with the way those layers are going to fall over the length. Absolutely. So the bottom half is really quite flattened in, in the bottom nape area. And I also wanted to make sure that the disconnection we put on is really quite soft as it does fall over it. So convex, as you can definitely see, that it is a very rounder style shape to it. Uh, again, it follows the head shape. Um, and I find that when it does fall into that little nook where we disconnect it, it'll fall out softer. So lots of followers, lots of people watching. It's great to have all our friends here. We've got Robin Yannick from Ottawa, oh, Joe Perfitta. <laughs> Joe Perfitta is watching. Hey, Joe. Jeff from Naples, Florida. Um, of course, Marina Lantos from Marina New Jersey. Lantos. I haven't even caught up with her yet, but lots of people watching, guys. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're here for Professionals Who Practice. It's part of our Pivot Point series, where we work with well-established professionals like Gino Chapman, an industry educator for well over a decade, winner of Naha a few years back, and creator of his own product line. 
called Black Label, which we can talk about a little bit as we get through. If you guys have any technical questions as we work through in these different panels, um, go ahead and shout out. I'll be looking for questions to share with Gina. Uh, Gina, was that just like a little bit of cross-checking that you just did? 100%. Always cross-checking work. <laughs> Uh, Claudio Simeone is wondering if a horizontal part would work here. Why vertical? Um, absolutely. I think anything can work in this manner because vertical, I can really take the shape of the head and really cut to it. Horizontal, you're going to be controlling a very heavy line, but you're going to be controlling it just in an elevation way here where you're still going to get the heavy corners out through the, the outer edge of the head here. And it's a lot easier to follow the head vertically, right? Absolutely. So, you know, like in the bottom there, you were trying to protect the outline so horizontally made it easier for you to over-direct all to one point, where here you can kind of follow the head. So I think that's a great point. There's no right or wrong with sections. There's things that are more efficient. You could do anything with any kind of section, but it doesn't mean it's the best or easiest way to do it. Now, um, I notice you're kind of over-directing a little bit as you work out towards the back of the ears. Is there a reason to keep weight behind the ears here? Yeah, absolutely. I find that sometimes in a mid-length cut, it's really quite nice to have that weight distributed right behind the ear or sometimes in that master process area. Um, it helps to really do the connection from the back to the front, especially when we go through and we're going to do a softer, rounder style shape. So would you say that these sections are all just vertical or are they pivoting a little bit? These are all vertical and they're coming over directly back to one. Again. It makes it a little easier to keep that weight, right? As if you pivot, sometimes it gets a bit rounder. Absolutely, absolutely. Carol Gattucci says, back in the 70s, they said we called following the head a sunburst. <laughs> we like, yeah, Gino's a creative absolutely. guy. Absolutely. So Gino, tell us a little bit about your uh, career. I know that you um, has been well over a decade of hairdressing and doing a lot of education. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the highlights. Oh man, the highlights. Well, highlights was definitely being able to move to Texas when I came here from California to go to school. I moved to Texas for about four and a half years. Uh, I got an education directing job, and I can tell you right now, I knew nothing of the sort, what it meant, what it did, and how I was supposed to do it. It was a learning It process. was just because of your good looks, wasn't hey, it? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, let's give this guy a job. He'll figure it out. But so you're an education director, and you just had to figure out how to do it? Absolutely. Figure out how to do it, but that's the thing about practicing. Practicing is repetition. It's the mother of all skill set. In these type of situations, while cutting hair and also putting into a role in that type of job, it was to practice what I was doing. So I thought it was actually quite amazing. So uh, along uh, your career here of being an educator, um, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier, you've worked very often using mannequins. Can you tell us a little bit about the benefits of working with mannequins and your thoughts on pivot point mannequins? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you right now, my whole career I've only used uh, pivot point mannequins. I've never used anything else. Not to say that there's also a lot of great things out there. The only thing that I do know from my conception of birth is uh, pivot points. So for this here, um, you know, the quality of the mannequin is absolutely amazing. The stands are absolutely amazing. As it comes to the stands, I have almost every single um, stand known to man that they have made at home, which I absolutely love. Yeah, they last a long time. I know I have one that's over 25 years old that I still use. All right. So really quickly, before I start cutting the front here, the way that I'm finding the guide here is really falling it back down. I find this is like into its 2D version. This is really an expansion to its 3D. It helps me to find the guide of where I want this to fall and soften up. I'm aiming below the chin level and I'm just elevating it slightly up around the head, almost falling the head shape as it comes through. Um, in this particular case, I'm standing off to the side of the head. I'm not standing in front of this, okay? The reason being is because when I cut this section, I want the same way to fall to come through. So it's really in, it's balanced, even though the techniques won't be balanced uh, in its nature. So all these panels are disconnected from one another, but, but visually they have to relate. 100%. Visually they all have to relate, and um, that's the thing I sometimes I feel about the art versus the science. You know, the science is we're giving the technique, we're giving the shape, uh, we're giving everything, the tools, but I also think sometimes the art needs to really uh, follow when it has to match from the back to the front or all the softening pieces that we're putting into this haircut right now. Now, what about tension? Um, it, it feels like to me like you really have this hair under control. You work very, very neatly. 
Can you tell us a little bit about tension, how you create it, how you manage it? Absolutely. One, uh, with no tension, there's no control. To me, no control, there's no consistency in your haircuts. Um, I'm also using the small side teeth of the comb. As you can tell, I'm using this black beauty here. That's um, the new black sesame yeah, bond. Absolutely. Those of you out there that are fans of the most classic cutting comb, the sesame bond, was available in green for many years, and then we made it in white, and now we've got it in black. So if you're interested in that comb, check out Hairbrain Pro. A little shameless plug, but it's because we love the comb. Oh, absolutely. The best $6 you'll spend. You'll ever spend. <laughs> $6 will change your life. So we were talking about tension before I interrupted you. You yep. were talking about, so you use the, far, the wide side to take sections. Absolutely. And then you flip over to the fine side to get a real great tension. And what about your fingers? I feel like you've got a real like lock on that hair. Um, yeah, with the fingers here, instead of cutting hair like this, where you can almost see the gaps in between, I prefer to really quite twist the hair over so then there's no demarcation in between the knuckles for those, if you can see that. So that helps me to hold the hair really quite nicely um, and pull extra uh, control on the hair that I need. So and you keep those fingers right behind the comb, nice even tension. Absolutely. And I mean, you're cutting, even though everything's disconnected, you're cutting incredibly clean. So I don't see any point cutting or... or um, free form yet? Is that something you'll do later or? Um, absolutely. It's something you can do later. Um, I really want to showcase off just very clean, controlled uh, sections and what they can do and how they can make texture come alive. So the concept being you pre-planned or pre-game through sectioning, your elevation over direction, and through that you're creating the looseness and the texture. So we don't always have to chop into hair. It can absolutely. be about planning out the angles. Absolutely. I notice most of this is being lifted pretty high. So that's one of the things that would make it soft. Is, that, is there any, going to be any graduation here, or is it all layering? Um, there, this sort of right now is in kind of in between that internal style of graduation where I'm still building uh, the weight here and following the shape itself because um, I am pushing the hair from short to long towards the back. Um, this side of the cut here is going to be a little bit more on the layered, which I think that's where the... The science is trying to make something even, even though it's not cut the same way. You have stayed stationary this whole time for the most part? Yes. The off to the I'm side? Moving, I'm staying right here off to the side. Anything I'm moving is actually my hands. I started here and I'm ending up to be right about here. This is your last section. So if you're just joining us, we are here back in Orange County in Southern California with our good buddy Gino Chapman. Uh, many of you will know him as a Naha winner and an industry educator now for well over a decade. Um, doing incredible work and uh, a good friend of Hairbrain from the very beginning. Uh, today he's showcasing a technique on a pivot point vinyl a mannequin. We asked him to do that as part of our Professionals in Practice series. It's an ongoing series that shows even well-established professionals are practicing and uh, and using these mannequins in classes because it's a great way to share and teach your ideas. Working on a whole creative idea of disconnected panels, it's all coming together beautifully. If you guys have any questions or comments or you want to shout out, be sure to leave a comment here. I'll be looking for them. All right, Gino, so it looks like you've layered through that side. Absolutely. You can see that right there. So again, just moving the haircut all the way through. And now for the next side here is I'm going to also cut it over. So I see you left the out, you, you had already cut a little bit of the length off the back. And are the sides are they going to stay longer like that or will you um, blend? Uh, no, I left the sides here because now it's up to suitability for you if you want the, the line to stay very square as it comes all the way through. Or some people like to have a little bit of that A-line effect to it. Um, it's really up to you. So all this stuff I get to come back through and so check off. Layer it all through first and then decide what you want to do with the outline so you can customize. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. I love that. See how it's falling on the shoulder? Etc. 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 So Gino, I know besides hair cutting, you also um, number one have made a product line, your black label product line, and I think alongside that, we we started to see you making a lot of cool hats and T-shirts. Um, so we asked at Hairbrain if Gino would design a few cool hats for us, um, and we're going to have those available on Hairbrain Pro pretty soon. So kind of hairdresser specific hats and stuff. When you get a chance, talk about what you've been thinking about with the designs there. Yeah, so with the hats that we're coming up with the designs right now, we wanted to come up with some uh, just really kind of streetwear for hairdressers. Um, and again, just a different effect, but really 
glorifying what you are as a craft hairdresser. If it's a colorist, if it's a hair cutter, if you dress hair, if you're in this field, we really wanted to uh, showcase the creativity of what you do and uh, give some personalization to it. So we are coming up with uh, some new hats that I think are really quite amazing. We'll have them up for sale soon. Um, we would love to all see you rocking it, putting it on Instagram, showing us your favorite hats. Um, and uh, you know, different environments at the salon, maybe at a trade show, whatever you like to, we'd love to see it because it's going to be awesome for the movement. Awesome. So now I see that you've moved into the second side and you're cutting it in a different way. So why, um, why approaching this differently? Um, again, just because I'm trying to challenge myself to still kind of well, still create this really rounded style of graduation. Again, a little bit shorter off the face, longer towards the towards the back. But I'll tell you, because this section right here is the smaller section, I feel with this elevation and with my finger angle right here, again, length is distance, distance is weight. This weight here, as it comes back and it falls back off the face, is gonna help the, the area where it's less dense to actually look denser than it really is. Um, so again, I wanted to challenge myself to see if I can cut two sides completely different and still make them look the same when we go through and start to style it out and finish it. Couple shout outs, we've got our good buddy Rob Cook from Atlanta watching. Rob, Rob, Always up? good to have Rob here. Anna Lee from Chaz Dean said she's taking classes with you before oh, Gino and you're amazing. Awesome. So you got some fans watching out there, classes that you've taught before. What, uh, what's it like taking a class with you? Like, what, what, what are you offering? Are you, I know you kind of slowed down a little bit because you were doing like a million classes a month. I, are I you still out there doing quite as many classes? I, I'm not or? as many as, as before, um, but definitely still teaching, still educating. Um, I'm also just going and doing other passion projects that uh, I firmly believe in, um, but it's never leaving the craft. I'm still with the craft, I'm still here, um, but I wanted to really do something and showcase a lot of other talents and, you know, a lot of hairdressers are very, very artistic and why can't we do other things also uh, to showcase that? I know you've got some partnerships going on. You're working with our buddy Charlie Price in the Beauty Underground. Uh, yes, shout out to I Charlie. I hear you've got a really exciting photo shoot for Naha. Yes. And uh, we wish you good luck with that one. Thank you so much. So you can see the balance and through here. So again, we wanted to really just showcase some softness off the face, working in the, the lower, the, like the upper decollete, lower neck area, and see if we can really start to match up some of this texture and movement through here. So again, still no real outline around the sides or the face. Not yet. Internal layering with, which is there a little asymmetry there, or was the goal for them to be perfectly symmetrical? Um, there's going to be a slight bit of asymmetry in it. Um, not, enough, not enough to fool the eye, though. All right, so we've got that final triangle left. It's very disciplined work here, triangle by triangle. All right. So this, I wanted to, again, give something a little bit sellable, things that are happening now, and everyone keeps talking about this curtain fringe that moves off the face. And does oh, this. the I, curtain band. Really, yes. I'm doing something very, um, just something a little bit more unique, and again, I wanted to practice it and see what I can do. So uh, the section I'm going to start, because it's asymmetrical, I'm definitely going to start where that section is on the top all the way through. And I'm going to go back to this very old school. Um, I do have to give a shout out to this technique, is because there is a wonderful woman in my life named Ginger Boyle. Yay for Ginger! Yay for Ginger, and she, uh, back in the day day, um, really taught me um, how to do some very soft, and you can see that. I'm just really kind of tapering my scissors over, but she used to use this technique a lot, and I always thought it was really fantastic to watch her do this. And I'm doing it very slowly, so you can see that here. We love Ginger, one of our uh, biggest friends and supporters over the years, and she's been featured with, at many Hairbrain events, and we'll be at Planet Salon in just a couple weeks to do our Facebook Live. Oh, who's, uh, who's the Facebook Live Ian, this time? Ian oh, Michael Black. Absolutely, absolutely, shout out to Ian. Beautiful. So now what I'm doing is I am definitely over-directing and pulling all the hair over. Now some people ask, does it matter how you twist it? I don't think it really does, but when I am pulling it, I am making sure that the hair that's coming over is getting pulled longer. Again, length is distance, distance is weight. So I want this curtain fringe to really explode and open up again longer towards the cheekbone. Here. So you twist it and bring it to the opposite side of the face, past the nose. Absolutely. So that so, gives you the length and the twisting gives you the softness? Yes, yeah, so you can see each of these and they always get directed right back to that middle one that I cut right there. 
So these will get directed all the way back here. And then once I get into its area of over direction, then I start to twist, but you can see that I'm twisting over. So this hair here has to travel further. And again, I'm just using that old formula of length is distance, distance is weight. So as you continue that, Gino, um, I know for many years you worked at uh, Planet Salon, but now you're more of a celebrity hairdresser and you're actually going uh, <laughs> on set and I see you sometimes posting stuff about Survivor and yeah, all this stuff. Yeah. So, you know, how did, how did you get there? How did you get to that point where you're like all over Beverly Hills working on celebrities and titans of industry? Oh, Just there's always people wondering how did you get to that level? Uh, you want to know the truth? <laughs> yes, yes. You want to know the truth. <laughs> Don't hold you, back. Uh, the, the PG version. Yeah, well, the truth is um, I got these, all of these um, gigs is because everyone knew that I was out educating in the field. So they trusted me well enough that I hopefully knew what I was doing or, again, um, always practiced what I was doing. So they gave me a lot of high-ended people um, because they knew that I practiced so much that I could take care of them hopefully in another uh, new way. Um, so so you're, you're saying you leverage being an educator so, so that any clients that you had, because you were in LA, so you probably had people in the Hollywood world, and they knew that you were an educator, so when they had high-value clients, VIPs, they would trust you because they had, which you don't hear that often. Sometimes people think education and celebrity hairdresser are two separate things. So I think I really like that story a lot. Yeah, it's really, and it's the honest truth. I would not have the the people I have in my repertoire today if uh, they didn't trust me enough that I was out in the field, I was training other hairdressers, I was training myself at the same time. Um, and again, it's, I, you know, to me it's always, you don't rise to the occasion, you sink to the level of your training. And so that way, when you start to go back... You don't to rise to the occasion, you sink to the level of your training. That's and a good one, buddy. Thank you. I like that. Yeah, and Put so, it on a hat. Yeah, exactly. Put it on a hat. Um, so now for those, and here, I'll give a little view here so you can see it. So you can see that I have my square shape down here. That's my guy. And all I'm going to do is just connect that full all the way through. So I have a really strong, very lobbish shape, if that's what you, uh, that's the type of length you want to call it. And again, this is a mid-length cut. Um, we are going to celebrate the texture um, just by diffusing it and letting the hair come alive all by itself. Now, you were saying you left this area um, between the front and the back so that if it was on a client, it's an area you could customize, make it a little bit rounder or squarer. 100%. Um, you know, I, and everyone's a consumer these days, and I think sometimes with consumers, they want to have the options. And while you're moving through, not to say that it's bad if you just completely come through and cut this off, you absolutely can. Um, but I think at the end, if you start to see the hair move a certain way or, or bounce a certain way, sometimes you need that leverage of a little bit of length so that it evens out as it comes up. Because sometimes if you come all the way through and it raises up, it's going to really start to get a little bit more rounded than you want it to be. So I think the customization is actually quite nice in times that way. Now, uh, obviously you're here today for the P uh, Pivot Point Professionals You Practice series. But do you practice at home? Do you still have mannequins and a tripod? And when an idea comes, do you try it at home? Uh, right now, I'll tell you, I have a mannequin sitting out on my patio right now, and I think people think I'm a serial killer. Oh yeah, you should yeah. see me. <laughs> now, I, I, we had some landscaping going on in our house today, and I had to bring this uh, Viola mannequin here for the Pivot Point ship to me. So I didn't want to carry it out, because you know there's all these guys working, and they would see. So I put in a suitcase. <laughs> To bring it out because, you know, if you're not a hairdresser, it can be a little shocking when you see these mannequins because they're so realistic. They're extremely yeah. realistic. Yeah, we actually, to add to that story, the alarm went off in our house a few days ago. And I know that the, we weren't there, but the police showed up to make sure nothing had happened. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I have a few mannequins sitting out, like, in, the, in my office area. I wonder what they thought when they saw them. But just a side note there. So All right. this is just a sea salt spray, uh, very gentle, very light, it doesn't get crunchy into the yeah. hair. Show us the bottle and tell us yeah. what and this is your product that you created. Yeah, so Black Label is, um, it's built uh, so with masculinity and strength, but also it's built for humans, so anyone can use it. But it is also a very men's, a strength of a men's line. Um, so a lot of men here, this is what this does. It just has a little bit of a sea salt into it, but also has, has kelp extract. And that's your packaging design and design, your whole concept, packaging, formulation. Absolutely. If people are interested in trying it, where can they get it? Uh, Black-label.com. Uh, if anyone's interested in uh, smelling it, touching it, and everything else, it smells amazing. All right, so a sea salt spray. 
uh, through the hair. Real simple, you don't feel like you need much more than that with this cut. No, and once I get it through, again, anytime you put products, especially like this, I wanna make sure that it's distributed quite nicely, so I'm gonna comb it through. So we had a question about the mannequin. Um, it is actually the Viola from Pivot Point. It's probably the most uh, well used. most well known, uh, most well used because it's it's a good head shape. It's not overly small, overly large. It's what they call a medium head shape. It's got a beautiful density and a beautiful natural texture of hair, and it's a, it's priced where you can buy several of them to work with. I will be honest with you, Pivot Point mannequins are a little more expensive than some of the ones that are out there on the market, but there's a lot of good reasons. Number one, the quality. Yeah. It's a noticeable difference. You can go on Amazon or eBay or whatever and find one for $10, and sometimes you've shown up for classes and people have those, and you kind of waste the day. Yeah. Because anything you cut just sticks out. Yeah. Pivot Point mannequins, you'll always get your best money's worth of the education. Second reason why they're a little more expensive besides the quality is because of the ethical practices that Pivot Point employs. I don't know if you know this, uh, Gino, but even in Asia, where most of these are made, um, and in some third world countries, they pay a fair living wage to their employees. You don't love that? Yeah. If, if they're what's called an SA 8000 company, so they're certified globally as an ethical practices company. If you're interested at all, go to pivotpointshop.com and watch a video about it. I got to see, I got to see an actual family, a husband and wife that work in one of their factories in China, saying how because they got this job, they were able to send their kids to college and completely show. So there's a lot that goes into the choices that we make, the products that we use. As hairdressers, we have a lot of power. We spend a lot of money, and we should really think about what we want to do. So this is a little $10 more. Where is that $10 going? Quality and ethical practices it makes a big difference. And helping humans help humans. Exactly. Absolutely. So, looks like you chose to diffuse dry after you put the salt spray in. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, just again, the, just a nice little sea salt spray to bring the, the texture alive in here. I know this is California and I know all over Instagram texture is a really big thing. If it's done with a flat iron, if it's done with a, uh, you know, a Marcel iron. Um, I feel like, you know, here in California, a lot of the beachy mist mm -hmm. that is really actually quite nice also. Hey, Gino, here's a question, a little bit off topic, coming from Kelly Ledette. She's wondering, for men's short hairstyle, do you trim the hair licks for the style or use product to tame the hair licks? Obviously, it may depend on the style, but in general. I think maybe she means what people call calyx. I believe if you call yep. it a calyx or a growing pattern of some sort. Yep. Um, that's really the length. When you work with that type of growing effect that's really aggressive, you have to make sure that you have enough length on top of it so it falls really quite nicely. Now, it depends where this growing pattern is. If it's on the top, you probably want a super really length so it falls really nicely on top of the head. Now, if it's growing somewhere in the main area or somewhere weird, which a lot of people have had it down here, it's either sometimes two things that I say. You either get rid of it, completely annihilate it, and manufacture a new one, or you make the hair cut a little longer. Um, so contain that way also. You know, a great uh, little tip that I learned when I was a young barber was it's either short enough that it won't matter for four weeks or long enough that it'll lay down. At 10%. So, you know, if it's, if it's the in-between length, then if they don't put a ton of product, then it just sticks up. And that's kind of the mark of not the best haircut. We want that product is great, but you shouldn't need product to make a short haircut even just lay down. So it's either short enough that it doesn't matter for four weeks or long enough that it will lay down. But that's just a, a rule of thumb, so to speak. And that's where practicing comes in with play. Um, you know, if it's practicing on a mannequin or if it's practicing on a ton of uh, male guests that can come in or friends that can come in. Um, and really practicing what kind of lengths are suitable for that type of growing pattern. Yeah, we got some of our friends uh, watching. Dennis Tatori, our friend from Chicago, the old school Sassoon group. Yvonne Duda is watching. Great to have you here. Hey, Yvonne. Chrissy Cole's giving you a sh shout out, Gino. Oh, she wow. assisted you for a class in uh, Omaha oh, and she learned so much. Oh, good. Cool. What's up, Chrissy? Any tips on diffuse drying or hand drying? I know it's something that I think still a lot of hairdressers and clients are still afraid of. They feel like they have to rip out a brush to make everything look polished. But what's your take on this kind of hand drawing? Um, you know, I try not to handle the hair too much. Um, you know, I, 
It depends on what kind of diffuser I'm using at the time. Right now I actually have a very uh, Dyson cone diffuser, so it's easier for me to put it into the hammer. Um, sometimes I use the YS part of the bag kind of diffuser, where you don't necessarily want to put it on top of it because it's really hot. Um, so I use kind of a combination of both. Like sometimes like the kind of the diffuser get the key a little uh, further away from the air, and sometimes if I need to enhance more the texture, I like to take that and just really push it in there. So you're kind of like lifting the hair off and letting it just coil around those little fingers. Can we see the basket on that diffuser? Because that's a great diffuser. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the Dyson diffuser. Definitely uh, a beautiful diffuser to work with. Now, is this something you take till it's 100% dry, or do you like to leave the hair a little damp? Uh, I have to say, it depends on the texture, I feel. You know, sometimes if you take it to 100% uh, to dry stage, um, it can frizz up even more. Sometimes it's nice to convert the, the wave of the curl with a little bit of moisture so it falls naturally on its own. Um, a trick that I like to do is, since I have it starting to, you can start to see the texture come alive and, um, and then moving, finishing off the product, sometimes I like to take the same product that I use, so it would be just the, the beat spray itself, and giving it a light mist back over it again, and just taking my hands and really just kind of letting it reform the texture. I like the way the, uh, the curtain bang is, is laying in there. It's just yeah. really beautiful. I love that little simple technique of twisting. And again, just reactivating the wave. That's what's beautiful about the oil. A lot of people are saying how great, how great it looks. You know, that, that's a great texture of hair. It's great to be oh, blown out or to work with uh, naturally like you've done here. Yeah, like I said, both sides are cut completely different, but we wanted to still get that same type of shape as you can see. So you can see it falling, even though, again, it's kind of the challenge of taking your techniques and mixing them up and seeing if you can still come out with something that's almost uniform in a way. Um, and again, look, making it look like you can sell it behind the chair, which I find it uh, to be actually quite Really nice. nice comment coming in from Carol Turner for us. Thank you. You're amazing and a blessing to the industry. Oh. Uh, hopefully she means all of us. <laughs> yeah. So at this stage, you know, everything was cut really clean and the panels were disconnected. You've got a beautiful soft finish here. So it doesn't even look to me like you need to chop through it or anything like that, yeah? Uh, no, I think, again, uh, the tension, the combs, the tools you use, again, investing in yourself, a great man can hit it for you, absolutely. Um, I think with all of those, with that practice and play, it makes it easier and it gets your technique much longer. Well, I want to thank our good buddy Gino Chapman for working with us today on behalf of Pivot Point, sharing this great lesson with you. If you missed any of it and you want to see how this stuff was achieved, you can go back and watch from the beginning at any time. You just go to Hairbrain's Facebook page and you click on videos and you can look through. We've done over 400 of these great videos. So if you're new to our education, that's it, something to check out. Support Gino Chapman and his education. Check out his brand, Black Label. He's made a whole line of really cool products. And uh, keep an eye out for the hats that he's going to be producing oh, for hair brand. He's got a special hairdresser brand called 100%. And coming up with just cool apparel for hairdressers. Not cheesy, no like scissors on it or anything like that. Uh, but like a cool kind of uh, street brand. Yeah, street like brand. Supreme yeah. or something yeah, like that for hairdressers. Yeah. So this guy's got a lot going on, which is awesome. And uh, we love him. Thanks again, Pivot Point, for the ongoing support. Thank and thank you all for watching. Peace out, guys.